Hello and welcome, I'm Mystical, this is Mystical Gaming and today we are in Watcher of Realms. Now what are we doing? Today we are butchering names. So, we're going to have a look at the champion, Jorge. I believe that's how it's pronounced, I think it's a Spanish name. Um, most people, however, will call him George. And he is the new Epic Defender that's coming out. And he looks absolutely brilliant. He looks fantastic, doesn't he? I look at that. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely love him the bits. And his skill kit is arguably the most interesting of all the champions that are coming out. The talent, damage scales off defense. First thing to know about him. There's a 30% chance of inflicting five second plague on the damage dealer when receiving damage from the ground units. So when you're attacked, you have a 30% chance to inflict plague on them. The trigger chance increases as the hero's HP decreases up to a maximum of 60%. Now plague deals 25% AOE magic damage to the inflicted and up to 10 enemies around them every five seconds. Okay, so someone's going to get inflicted and up to 10 enemies around them can be infested, inflicted. Basic attack is a magic attack, deals 110 magic damage and that is to one enemy. Now the next attack he's got is a passive. Plague Outbreak during the ultimate. Right, let's start with the ultimate then. So, next up is the ultimate. It comes on at 500. It lasts for 12 seconds. It is an auto cast. When triggered, bit weird, we don't trigger. Increases defense by 40%. So, his defense goes up. That's always nice because don't forget, he is a defender, so he's being hit. So, defense is nice and it's going to increase his damage. Inflicts Plague. We know what Plague is. That does our AoE damage. Yeah, on targets blocked by the hero. So there's only people we're blocking and increases the damage of Plague on all targets in range up to 40%, lasting for 12 seconds. Next skill here is the passive. Now, during the ultimate, after Plague deals damage three times to a target, it will be spread to the target, I think that's a misprint, it means from the target, to up to three targets. That's the way I read that. Badly, but that's the way I read it. So I think after it's inflicted damage on a target three times, it then spreads to another target, and it can do that up to three times. Plague inflicted through spreading cannot spread again. So once you've inf inflicted it on someone, that someone cannot spread it to anyone else and will not spread to targets who have been inflicted with it. So if you've got a big mob coming at you or a no large number of mobs, they cannot then inflict someone who has already been inflicted, which is nice to see. And the other part is increases damage in the arena. So now this spanks that he should do damage. He's a defender, but he should do damage. So I'm taking him as a tanky AoE mage is what I'm going for. So gear isn't brilliant, but we have gone looking for defense percent and crit rate. Defense percent and crit rate, and we increase our defense by 10%. Main stack defense, and we've got some crit rate on there. Defense, crit rate. Lastly, defense and crit rate. So we've managed to get our crit rate up to over 100%. We, we've overcapped ourselves. No great shakes, and we've got our defense up there by we've increased it by what another 200%. Now, our artifact we've used is Odess's Grace, and that is because increases defense by 10%, gains an extra 3% defense bonus for every 10 seconds on the battlefield, stacks up to three times. So we should get 30% there, and is it that 40%? Is that the way this works? Probably need testing that out at some point. And that's the way we, we've built him up. And uh, in the blurb that it says about the champion, it says, ideal for gear raid one. So let's go and have a look how the plague works, where it works, what happens with it. And here's gear raid one. So I flipped off power of dominance and we'll start at stage 18. And let's jump into the fight. And let's go and have a look at what we do. Chuck down Jorge or George. Let's put him down. Um, which way do we want to face him? Let's start traditionally and just face him up towards the attacker and there's a little healer for him and we'll speed this up so we can get some people to come down to him a bit quicker and we'll then see what happens. Right now we can start by slowing it down. We're doing 7k damage, 7 6. Now this is the infected plague going on. <laughs> I like the graphic of the little cloud, green cloud of flies and things going around him. But it does make it tricky to see. Okay. Right. 
So unless we've got mobs walking past him, once they've walked past him, he's not infecting anyone. So the way to beat his AoE damage is just to walk past him. It's not so, so much AoE, it's more of a, a cone in front of him. It's help then, so when someone walks past him now, they hopefully will get infected, walk past him and infect other people. Yeah, so we now see a, a spurge of damage behind him. But that only lasts for a period of time. And they can't reinfect people. So that will, yeah, it's self-cleansing. Right, so that's not, that's not brilliant. It's not an AoE from where he is or anything like that. That's it, just done and dusted. Hmm, that's a little tragic. In all honesty, that's a lot tragic. For AoE wise, we've only killed four people. And I don't see it increasing much. Now there's the wall gone, so they're now all going to walk past him. But once they've walked past him, a few seconds later, they don't have to worry about it. And it doesn't do a massive amount of damage. There's the people walking past him, taking the plague with them. That's nice, and they spread it to other people. But a few seconds later, he's got a very short lifespan, hasn't it? It's not going to cause a global issue, that is it, because you're not going to transmit it for very long. Right. And there they are, broken through, gone straight through. That's not ideal. By any stretch of the imagination. Okay, we might. Let's see how much damage you've done. We've done just over 5 million damage. Let's change this again. And this time we're facing to the side, so that way we're attacking out to the side of us, and hopefully we'll keep that plague damage up and going. And then, then that'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Then it's all good. Just a little quirky, aren't you? Right, now we've got in place into the side. <laughs> now we've got in place him to the side, he gets attacked from the front or from his right, turns 90 degrees. So this isn't going to do any good either, is it? Or is it? Oh, maybe it will. No, I spoke too soon. It's not doing any good at all. To then have to kill these mobs, wouldn't he? Before he's willing to turn to the side. And he's not knocking off enough damage there. Now I could change one of his pieces to be crit damage. But then... How much of a tank do you not want him to bear? Now they're walking past him again, they take a bit of damage on the walk past, but shortly after that it's going to be cleansed. This is going to be very much the same scenario as before. So he's facing, so does it go on for a bit longer? Maybe. This seems to be working a little better. Now he's got some people down. So definitely need to place him side on, I would have thought. Now they've cleansed and walked past him. Hopefully this time round he's got some more damage, but it's not it's not fantastic. They did they play test him before they brought him out? Did anyone go? Did the designer say, "Yes, yeah, this, this is what I want. This is how I expect it to work." I think his idea. Not ideal for Gear Aid 1 where they're advertising him to be used. This is not fantastic. Um, there's only 13 million damage placed sideways. Right, let's put him the other side of the wall and can he then plague over the top? So can I place him behind the wall and chuck plague over the top? And you hardly defend it then, are you? You're... No, it's not going to work, is it? That's not going to work at all. No. We're hitting one target, and that's it. But to spread plague, you've got to be attacked. Now we've got to wait for them to break through the wall. Doesn't seem like the best option in the world. 
where you wait for them to break through the wall, then spring into action. I don't think this is the way ahead either. I'm just not seeing that he's gear raid three material, but then we'll chuck him in 19 in a minute and see what happens. More mobs coming through constantly, and we'll chuck him in a proper team and we'll see what happens there. If you haven't cleared 18 yet, then I wouldn't worry about building him out. Not when you're going to get greed at day 30. I don't think he's no AoE magic dealer, then, is he? Let's have a look at that one. Again, 13 million. Okay, so if I put you in the middle, can you you get both sides? Does that improve the lot? Does that improve what we're getting from you? Now we've got a displaced vortex, haven't we? Right, okay. That's not the ideal place I'd put you. I'm now losing a slot for a healer where I generally put a DPS or DPS aid on the other four slots. Now people just walk past you. There you go, you hit someone, well done. But, oh, you are hard work to get, get anywhere going. Feel like I'm shoehorning you into a place where you don't really, you don't really fit. At least now we've got people going past. Now when you get people going past, you're infecting everyone on both sides. So that should increase your damage. Which makes no odds because the boss is quite happy to, to heal through your damage. Makes a bit of a shame. We get the rest of the team built up and they died anyway. Killed seven before you died and they took the wall. Let's see what your damage came in at. That's part of 30 million. I'm just conscious now that we're trying to get him to fit somewhere where maybe he doesn't actually fit. The design was a nice concept, but let's put a healer on this side. Now, both healers are getting you. So hopefully, you'll survive all the way through, and we'll see if you can do any damage there. But you, that's got off to start. Just do ultimate sounds on when you like. Constant AoE damage. The ticks are nice, and I bet it's really racking up his damage. The boss out heals it massively, so the boss isn't concerned by this. I'm just curious about how long it lasts. We get a datum of his damage. I think his damage is worth it or not. We'll put a team around him in a second and we'll see how he functions within a team. But I'm now sort of aware that I'm, I'm sort of more or less building a team around him and him slotting into a team. 30 million? Yeah. So he's still around that 30 million mark. Right, let's challenge again. All right, so let's get him down there, put it on two times. Let's get him healed up. Now with heal reduction on, we are getting people dead, but how much of this damage he's doing... And that remains to be seen. But if I've got this much heal reduction coming in anyway, whether that is from Lasser and his skills or whether that is from Dulles and his book, I really don't know how much is he giving to that. It would be interesting to see his damage at the end. It should be relatively high, his damage. He's dealing out this constant supply of it. But whether it's, it's worth it or not, I don't know if he's solely a gear rate one sheen I, would i keep him here i mean if i've got other champions doing aoe um heal reduction and then aoe damage if i've got the other champions here then is he my missing piece of the puzzle i'm not 100 percent sure that he really is i don't think yes i've got him now brilliant that's gear raid one sorted for me. I just see there's not enough. These two are going to walk past. Let's slowly take the boss down. That'll be the boss going down now. And then we'll have a look at who did what damage wise. I should imagine his damage is pretty, pretty good, to be honest. But was it any useful damage? If I had the other champions. Would I, would I think, yes, he's what I'm missing. I, I just don't. Just don't see it. Yeah, so he's up there as high damage, but do I want him? That's the I want him in that space. So this is it. You've got to pick him over the likes of Dolores, who's just sat there buffing three of your DPS. 
does that cover what he does? Taking a Nissol just out of shits and giggles more than anything else. I could have stuck Valeria in there. Could have stuck another um, mage in there doing straight AoE. I mean, you could put a marksman in there who does AoE damage. I mean, it won't be as much, but... Everyone else takes up the slack of damage that he could have done. I just don't, just don't see him fitting into gear raid one. You've got to build a team around him and force him to go in somewhere where it doesn't seem that he's particularly great. Just want to chuck him into, let's have a quick look at, so he is an epic tank. Um, there's an epic tank. Let's put it on and we'll, we'll see how long our epic tank lasts. And it might be a brilliant tank. That'd be the, the other option. One of the advantages of Olag and some of the some of the other tanks as well is they hit an invulnerability part. So even if the boss gets a lucky crit off it, um, they can hit invulnerability and all is good for a little while. You've got an emergency stopover. But there he goes, he's finally gone down and the boss walks past. Coin count is uh, 134. Let's just replay it and see how long Georgie Jorge goes. Come on then, George. Let's survive for a bit. Oh, wow. You're still getting hit for 11k, aren't you? That smarts. There you go. Straight through. So you're not a fantastic tank. You're not a fantastic AOE mage. That is good, to be fair. If he was a brilliant tank and a brilliant AOE mage, then what are your job of your other fighters? Why have other defenders in the game. I think he's jack of all trades, master of nothing. It does say it that it'd be good in uh, Immortal Codex, and he might well be good in Immortal Codex. That might be the place that he shines. It also may not be. I mean, because he's not a fantastic tank, is he? Let's have a quick look at the gallery for a second. Is he Captain Reeves, but that's limited. As defenders go, there you go. There's his role. He is the defender for the cursed cult. If you don't have Captain Reeves, so unless you've got the limited champion there, then he works as your defender for your faction trials. There you go. That is his slot. I feel. God, oh, that's disappointing. I'm disappointed because the the kit ran. Read so well and it sounded so awesome. It's a shame that you can just walk past it, and unless there's fresh people walking past bringing a new curse with them, then it doesn't really matter. So that's a bit of a shame. But also, it's a good thing because he shouldn't be able to do everything. You, you've got the likes of Greed to be AoE mages as an epics. You've got all legs to be this epic tank. So he shouldn't be everything. Not all. All epics should be fantastic. Although I think he's a little sad at both, which is a shame. It would have been great if he was just a, a solid tank. He doesn't seem to be that solid as a tank. And I wouldn't pick him over an AOE mage, which makes him useless there as well. So I think they've tried to do too much and he fails on both scores, which is a shame. But probably the Coltest faction probably deserved have a defender in them which is nice to see if they're going through the factions and, and fleshing them out over what they're actually missing then it's good to see that they're doing that and that's that's a plus for the game faction trials haven't tried you in you know i bet you're good in faction trials gear raid one where they're advertising him that's it mate that's about as good as you as you get in i think why would you put him in arena he doesn't do enough damage? I hadn't got any of his awakenings done. Maybe he becomes awesome when he's fully awakened. Just at the moment, he, he's not. But I can amend that afterwards. I don't think his awakenings are going to do that much because they don't do that much for him. They just for attack for a bit less on him. And block one more person. Or damage reductions, yeah. So he gets uh, an increase. 
doing his damage and physical damage reductions. There's nothing to improve his AOE or anything like that. Um, that's a shame. Well, on that sad note, um, I'll see you all later. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. It will be helpful. And I'll see you all in the video again soon. Cheers for your time then. Goodbye.